June the 27th was a historic day for Guinea as voters turned out in large numbers to choose new leaders in the country's first ever democratic election. Guinea has been under military and civilian dictatorships for over half a century, so many were happy with the signs of change witnessed here. It gives me pleasure to vote for my chosen leader because we want change now in this country. Everybody wants the same change. I feel better after this vote. I did my duty. Now I'm going back home. I voted in peace and tranquility. Everything is calm. I think that everything will be okay. We have a lot of hope. A few weeks prior to the historic polls, presidential candidates were busy drumming up support from voters across the country. Among them is Alpha Conde, seen here campaigning in Conakry. He represents the opposition RPG party or Rally for the People of Guinea. Conde promises to bring economic growth and democracy. <laughs> Alpha Conde is one of the favorites out of the 24 presidential candidates. A vocal critic of previous regimes, he spent a better part of his political career in jail. He was poised to win the presidential election in 1993 before the then ruling government cancelled a batch of votes. I have faith in the young people and women of Guinea who want change, but we're going to have to fight until the last moment in this election. And I think that a president isn't just a prime minister. A president is someone with vision and the capability to lead people. Many hope that this election will end a political crisis that's gone on since a military junta staged a coup following the death of President Lansana Conte in late 2008. At first, there was public support as the military promised democratic elections, but the polls never took place. The then junta leader, Musa Dadis Kamara, suggested that he may compete in the elections, angering pro-democracy activists who took to the streets in protest last September. The military responded by brutally killing about 150 people and raping women. Kamara later defended his reasons for holding on to power. Les Guinéens vont me regretter le jour où je quitterai ce pouvoir. Tous les Guinéens, prenez note, écrivez vos notes. The people of Guinea will regret the day that I leave power. Everyone in Guinea will. Take note of this, because you have to keep a record for history. After me, no one will be able to manage this army. Even within the army, if someone tried to make me live today, the soldiers will take up arms and start to fight amongst themselves. And no one in the civilian population knows how to control the army either. I am the vital link. A few weeks later, Kamara was shot by an aide and flown out of the country for medical treatment. He's still recovering in Burkina Faso more than half a year later and did not stand in the election. Mamadou Aliou Bari is a political analyst based in Conakry. C'est la première élection où les Guinéens sont sentis pour une fois. This was the first election where Guineans felt that they have the power to decide. Because from the time of Sekoutoure's referendum in 1958, all the way through to Lansana Conte, elections were always held to get the man already in power elected. This is the first time, and I think it should be said that it's the first time in Africa that none of the transition leaders stood in the election, not the President of the Republic, not the head of the Transitional Council, not the Prime Minister and not any of the army. None of them were candidates. But the political instability has been an economic disaster for Guinea. The mining sector makes up 70% of all exports. Guinea is the world's top bauxite exporter and is rich in gold, uranium and diamonds. But the US, African and European unions all imposed sanctions on the country, so the industry took a big hit. 
Today, Guinea is one of the poorest countries in the world, despite all its natural resources. For Ibrahima Sisoko, a jeweler in the capital Conakry, who takes in unemployed youth as apprentices, what the country needs now is a government that can guarantee stability and bring down the cost of living here. We have suffered so much. Sekutura led us for 26 years. The time of Lansana Conte was 24 years. So here we are now. We want democracy today. We want someone who's capable of bringing real democracy to Guinea. So far, the exercise has been relatively peaceful, but some incidents of violence have been reported in the country's west after rival party supporters clashed. Another leading presidential candidate, Selou Dalem Diallo, of the Union of Democratic Forces of Guinea, or UFDG, says that the chaos has threatened his campaign. It upsets me a lot because this tarnishes the image of my campaign, which went through 33 districts without any hurt or violence. Yesterday, truly, we were the object of a violent attack by militants of the UFR, and I condemn that. I deplore it, and I ask of my supporters to show restraint. They should not take part in revenge attacks. Violence is a state of mind. We should make sure that we can properly go through the elections. Saran Darabakaba is also running on a Convention for African Peoples or CDP ticket. She's the only female candidate contesting and is popular among women voters. My experience and my work for the government has made me understand how important it is for women to be included within the instances of decision making. Guinea will have to become an ordinary country once again. An ordinary country is a country where the institutions are strong. It's a country where there is a real separation of powers. It's a country where the legislator really turns the citizen's problems into his or her problems. The army says it's ready to support whoever wins the polls as Guinea makes its transition to democracy. By the time our story went out, who that would be hadn't been announced yet. Once it is, they'll face the daunting task of trying to fix Guinea's shattered economy while implementing policies that can quickly improve the standard of living for people here.